Bux loves watching TV, but every time any type of animal appears on the screen, he goes crazy, growling, barking, uncontrollable. And then there's Jono, terrified of the baseball coach, shaking, barking, and even wetting himself if the coach comes near. And with both dogs in the same house, Dr. Chris, I really need your help. Yep, separate problems under one roof. This is gonna be quite a challenge. Marita Taylor is the frustrated owner of these two little monsters. In public, they're angels. It's at home that the fun begins. Let's see problem number one. John O in action when Marita's friend Tony arrives. Hey, how are you? What's happening? Tony is Marita's baseball coach, and off the field, they're good mates as well. But John O clearly isn't a fan. They just don't get along at all. But Tony's a good guy. He is a great guy. But for some reason, John O. John O just doesn't like him. Tony drops in regularly, but imagine this commotion non stop every time he visits. You'll go behind a chair and just make sure that I'm in view all the time, that he just seems that terrified that I can't be out of his sight. So what could have set off this change in behaviour? The only thing we can think of, there was one day they were coming to our house and it took them three hours to get here because they got lost on the way. And um, when Tony got out of the car, he just sort of threw his arms up in the air and said, oh, it's taken us so long to get here. Yeah, in that instance, it was just, you know, a bit of showmanship and we're out the car and God, and that was it. Tony's a premiership baseball coach, but with John O, he's definitely on a losing streak. Now, I thought we'd come out here because this is what I refer to as the scene of the crime. This is where it all happened. I have to stress, when Tony turned up late that day, he'd had a can of drink, but as a passenger, that one can was enough to make him, well, a little bit noisy. Now, the thing about alcohol is it changes us. John O was used to Tony being Tony, sounding a certain way, moving a certain way, smelling a certain way. And when you put on that show at the front of the car, all of a sudden John O was like, hang on, is this the same guy? So now whenever you come into the house, he's immediately on the back foot and very wary of you. So that means I've got to give up drinking? <laughs> no, I think we can actually still get away with those one or two drinks oh, lucky. and be best mates with Jono. But we need to stop this <laughs> before you lose both your ankles. <laughs> Tony's a good bloke and he sincerely wants to mend the rift with Jono. And this is a remedy they'll both enjoy. Take that, on your way. One super long lead is Get all we need. We need to establish the comfort distance between you, Tony, and Jono here. Yep. Jono's a bit wary of this new setup. And then over time, we decrease that distance. And as we do that, we build up that trust that Jono has for Tony because he's out in the park, he's having a great old time. He's enjoying himself, so he begins to associate Tony with fun, with exercise, and with interaction, but most importantly, with trust. So decrease the distance, increase the trust. Well done. Good, Jono. Good. That's your dear. Now, Tony, this is something special. You are an animal person after all. <laughs> Maybe. I think, I think you want him over. Yep, just a short space of time and you might have found the trick. One session with you and it's all turned around. The coach coaching the coach, huh? <laughs> yep, I'll have to tip my hat to you. <laughs> so one happy ending. I'll be back to try to sort out problem number two with Bucks later in the show. Hey, you know, best mates now, eh? Hey? That's the way it's going to be. That's great. We humans spend a lot of time and a lot of money trying to find the perfect bed for that perfect night's sleep. And it shouldn't be any different for our pets. So let's look at the options. Like us, animals come in all ages, shapes and sizes. So what's good for one won't necessarily be good for all. Now, just like Paulie and Murphy here, I've got to say I'm a big fan of the raised bed. Gets them up off the cold, wet ground and also allows the air to circulate underneath the mattress here. It's also very handy for arthritic dogs that can walk in and out of bed very easily. 
Panic beds range in price from $50 to $115. And of course, nowadays, designer beds are all the rage, but you will pay for fashion like this. You can't forget about practicalities. I know dogs can dirty up beds, so make sure the cover is always machine washable. It's very important. Designer beds cost anywhere from $40 to $120. If your companion is a little old or just a little spoilt, what about warming things up a bit? And what about this? For those pets that are extremely stiff in their joints or just plain spoilt, there's now the electric pet bed warmer. Just like our electric blanket, keeps them warm the whole way through winter. I don't think we'll be moving squeak anytime soon. Now, if you've ever experienced back pain, you'll know just how debilitating it can be. But what if the one in pain was your pet? Well, that's exactly what's happening with Dexter here. Big, friendly Dexter is a six-year-old golden retriever living in Melbourne with Judy and Hans von Rosendahl and his little mate, Herbie. But poor old Dexter's got a crook back. He just isn't as nimble as he used to be. He's almost like one of the children since the kids left, you know. We've, I've only got Dexter here to look after. So uh, the kids are always saying how I spoil him, rotten. Disc degeneration in the lower back is common for large breed sporting dogs and it's often difficult to diagnose and treat. Dr Charles Kuntz at the Southern Animal Referral and Emergency Centre recommended surgery to repair Dexter's ruptured disc. And today's the big day. Good boy. Any issues with continued pain? No, he's actually been terrific, but I've been really careful. We yeah. haven't been... Um, going to the park and right, right. playing so with, with lots with of other dogs, just exercise. a small little walk and things. Today, Dexter's having a CT scan before surgery. Routinely used on humans, CT scanning is relatively new for vets. Dexter's also had an MRI, the results clearly showing the extent of the problem. Now, if we look at the spine, as we travel down, the spinal cord is normal here, not compressed until we get down to here, and then you can see a bulge of the disc at the lumbosacral junction, right there where it's bulging and pinching down the nerve roots. Dexter's in good hands. Dr Charles has performed more than 1,300 spinal surgeries. So the basic approach is to cut through the skin, go through the fat, the muscle, and then get out down to that uh, vertebral column and, and yeah. see where our problem is. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's quite a bit deeper. You know, you feel your landmarks on the outside. Turns out that we're probably going to be about six or seven centimetres deep mm. in here before we get down to the spinal cord. Yeah. It's the usual story with uh, golden retrievers and yeah. Labradors. They usually carry around a few extra extra pounds or two, yeah. don't they? Well, oh, that's true of Dexter, of course. Dexter's uh, fighting fit. So how do you reckon Dexter's operation went there? Oh, it went fine. Um, there was some compression there, probably not as, as bad as some of them that I've seen, but I think we were able to decompress the nerve roots nicely and we didn't traumatise the cord at all, so I'm, I'm optimistic. OK. And in the next few days for Dexter, how, how do they look? Uh, good. Just rest, uh, a lot of pain relief uh, and trying to get him to start eating. Uh, probably get him out to start walking tomorrow and hopefully home the next day. Four-legged patients feel stress just like we do. So the staff here bring in their own pets each day to make everyone feel more relaxed. We bring them in each day so that it feels a little less like hospital for all our um, emergency patients and surgery patients that come in here. So when a patient comes in, they can get a chance to, to make a new friend as well as be healed They can here. if they're well enough, especially for our radiation patients. Some of them um, bored um, because the treatment may actually take up to three weeks at a time. Um, so if they have to live here, we um, like to make them feel like they are at home. When, when do they get a chance to sleep? Because it's... <laughs> There's a bit of a fight occurring in my groin right now, which I'm not too, <laughs> too comfortable with. 48 hours later, Dexter's looking a bit sore and sorry for himself. It was a big op, but he's doing well. And it's time to go home. Look who's here. Oh, Dexter, how are you? Yeah. Good How is that? Good boy. How's it going? He's great. He's really good. So we should be in good shape. Just keep us posted yep. if you have any questions, okay? Great. Okay. Right, Thanks, great. Charles. Thank great you to very see much. You. Bye. See you later, buddy. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Carl. See you. 
and a month down the track, we're pleased to report Dexter's made a full recovery, with lots more energy to play with his best mate, Herbie. Now, you've just got to love the summer. You've got the beach, the cricket, and, of course, the good old Aussie Barbie. Dogs love Barbies too. Mmm, all those tantalising smells. Now, it might seem like the easiest thing to fling a little buddy a tidbit or two, but there are some golden rules about the human foods your dog should never eat. For dogs, sausages are a definite no-no. Some of the additives are not suitable for animals and they're just too high in fat for pets. Also, keep fried onions off limits. They cause serious anemia in dogs, which can lead to all types of trouble. And never, ever give your dog cooked bones. They can splinter, causing injury to the mouth and throat and potentially fatal damage to the stomach and intestines. Keep finished plates and scraps way out of reach. Remember, resist those puppy dog eyes and feed them what they're meant to eat, not what they want to eat. One final thing, when you are cleaning up after that barbie, make sure your little mate doesn't give you a hand because this drip tray with all its fats and juices could be a whole tray of trouble. Earlier in the show, we sorted out the rift between Tony and Jono. I'm confident they'll soon be best mates again. OK, problem number two. Now, I've heard of television critics, but apparently, Bucks, you're something else. It's like they sit there and watch it, and as soon as he sees an animal, he's up and he's out of his chair and barking at the screen. With a state-of-the-art home theatre system, it's easy to see that Marita enjoys a TV. But definitely not with this racket. Do you think he's scared or do you think he's excited? I think more excited because if he's scared, I think he'd probably run away rather than trying to attack them. Marita is at her wit's end. She doesn't want to banish Bucks outside. She wants to enjoy the television with both her little housemates in peace. Now, this must impact upon your television watching. It does, definitely. It gets very frustrating and we can't just sit back and enjoy a nice movie when there's animals in it. Now, I notice you've got a fish tank here. Any response to the fish tank? No, he actually pays no attention to the fish at all. Not a fish man, huh? Now, I also noticed that you have a moose in the house. A talking moose in the house. Does Bucks respond to the talking moose? No, not at all. Not a thing. So fish are OK, and so is Mr Moose. Any particular animal that he takes exception to? Or? Uh, horses and dogs are probably his favourite, but mm -hmm. yeah, it can be any animal. Hi, I'm Nikki Buckley, and welcome... Oh, really, the way to look at it is that Bucks, in a way, is a victim of his own eyesight. His eyesight is so good that the animals almost seem real. And because it seems so real, he obviously has to bark at them to get rid of the animals because he sees them as being a threat to you and to the house. So how do we get around it? Well, the thing about animals on TV for him is that it, it's actually a novelty to see them. And understandably, he gets very worked up, very excited. What we need to do is make animals on TV not so exciting for him. And what I'm talking about is playing a DVD like this over and over again. Show after show, so he, all he sees is animals time after time. So, your job, just press play and walk away. Yes, it's going to be a very noisy household, but Bucks will soon settle down when he realises those screen animals are just that and don't pose any threat. Now, OK, boys, I'm expecting the best of behaviour. Now, no more bad reports. Deal.